We are giving away a year's supply of our burger, our award-winning burger, Travis's award-winning uh, beef uh, at Aroma Time. Go on our website, aromatimebistro.com. There's a link to there to, to sign up. And we will give you a burger a week for a full year on us. Um, really cool contest. Now that uh, we did win best burger, a lot of people jumped into that contest, so I'm getting there. <laughs> I have a, I have a, I guess it's a consolation prize, or I'm gonna give you a little hint. Everybody gets a free burger. We're all gonna give you a free burger. Everybody who GR joins is gonna get one. You're gonna get a postcard, you're gonna get a free burger, so don't think you're signing up and uh, not gonna get anything. But one lucky winner will win 52 burgers for the next 52 weeks. That contest is coming to an end very soon. October 12th, uh, we're gonna be at the Hudson Valley Best Of Awards. Uh, in Poughkeepsie. In Poughkeepsie, at the Poughkeepsie Grand, where we celebrate all the Best Of winners. We've invited you, hopefully yep. you can make it. I know you we'll wanna come. Um, uh, and you can talk about the beef while we're serving it right then and there. Yeah, I absolutely. think that's I think that's a really gonna be a unique partnership because uh, I don't think that's ever happened before where the best burger is the best chefs making it with the with the farmer there right with it. So I'm really excited about that aspect yeah. of it. So this was supposed to be a Facebook Live video, but we have not the greatest service here at the farm. And uh, we're super excited at Roma Time because we just won Hudson Valley's Best Burger. And uh, that's from Hudson Valley Magazine's Best Of Awards. Uh, it's like a 35 year old award ceremony where you, the residents of the Hudson Valley can go online now, you used to be able to buy a ballot in the magazine, you can go online and vote for your best restaurants, your favorite martini, your best brunch place, your best nail salon, basically all the best independent places across the Hudson Valley you can vote for, and we get awards, and it's an awesome thing because it's great for business. This year we got a couple awesome awards. We got best beer selection in the Hudson Valley, best Ulster County restaurant, and best Hudson Valley burger. But I only cook the burger, and I only uh, we only serve the burger, and then we do the finishing touches. But I'm here with Travis right now, who actually raises the beef where our burgers come from. And uh, it's from a local farm here in Stanford. Stanford or Stanfordville? Stanfordville. Stanfordville, Dutchess County. And uh, we began our relationship well over a year ago, a yeah. year and a half ago. Yep. And um, we're back at the farm. We were here a year ago taking pictures. Although last year the leaves were in their peak. It might have been a week after their last peak. Last year everything was a lot more brown because it was so dry. The grass was brown, the yeah. leaves were the leaves were popping. Yep. Um, so. Jamie, were you able to go in on the cattle up there? I did. And, and zoom in. The There's a bunch of cattle that are way out there. Um, I just want to say, you know, we did win this award, but you know, don't think you have to look out, look for our burger or 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 Travis's beef here at Wheatley Farms. I mean, yeah, come find us, but keep eating local. Local is where it at, where it's at. Keep supporting local agriculture. Um, you know, the best burger is always the local burger, right? Uh, so we're super proud to have won this award and actually have a partner like you that produces something from our local community. So let's talk about the farm here. I'm, I've been to the farm before. Um, I was really impressed, which is why we buy the beef. And it comes through a great distribution uh, distribution hub, like a farm hub, mm -hmm. which I believe is, is, for me personally as a chef, uh, that farm hub is doing a fantastic job with all kinds of products for us throughout the valley. Yeah, it's great for me too. It's it links me up with a lot of uh, restaurants I normally wouldn't be able to do business with. Even with you, I couldn't afford to drive to Ellenville right. once You're, a week to drop off a box of beef. It just doesn't. No, pay. we're but we use. I think we ca I think we're on target to use about two thousand pounds. Yeah, it's close to two thousand pounds, fifteen hundred to two thousand pounds this year. Yep. And even though it's a sizable account to drive two hours back more once than that, week. it that's a lot. So yeah. we have this great farm hub in the Hudson Valley called Farms to Table. And these are all over the country. Sullivan County is getting one. Um, there's one up more north in uh, by Delhi. Um, there's also Hudson Valley Harvest, which is a mm -hmm. food distributor. So there's all these places that are allowing people like Travis, who's on a smaller farm here. You have what, 20 cattle? Uh, no, we're up to about 40 right now. Awesome. Yep, 40 and then there are calves as well. So right now we're about 80. There's a baby, baby out there. Okay. All the babies. Okay, so a couple more to come in. That's this this days. this new distribution realm allows you to get to tons more restaurants. Yeah, absolutely. You would not be able to do it without them. There's just there's no way about it. Uh, any given day when I have to make hay or something, there's no way I have two hours to spend in the car to deliver one box of beef. It just doesn't pay. <laughs> or even if I made a route out of it, 
I just don't have the time as a one-man operation. And then you'd have to put do billing. Yep, billing and, <laughs> and everything. And it's Invoice, just, you try to call and get paid. Yep. And it, that, that's, that's it's a whole just so handy that I just get it ready in the morning and then they come whenever they want, pick it up, and next thing you know, it's at your door. So the Farm Hub allows me to deal with 10 farms every week. They can be different farms, they can be the same farms, whether it's from eggs to cheese to produce to, to seasonal things, stone fruits. It allows me to deal with all these different farmers every week and have one billing system, one distribution system. It's really great. And that's how I originally met you through Farms yep. to Table. So I was looking down their list and saying, oh, let me look at let me look for a place that, that can provide us enough beef, 1,500 to 2,000 pounds for the year and develop a relationship. So I went through the list, looked at a lot of places, called a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Uh, and basically sort of did my interview process to find out what kind of beef and how's it fed and all that kind of stuff and if they could actually keep up with production. There's a lot of great small farms there that they can't, they don't produce yeah. that much, um, which is one of the things for me. A lot of people come to my restaurant and say, Marcus, you got to try the guy down for me. He does fantastic beef or they have fantastic this, fantastic that. And, and as, as the more I investigate, they could basically deliver a fraction of really what I need. And it's, don't get me wrong, it's nice to buy things here and there, but when we're serving a burger, we need to be consistent year yeah. round. Yep. When we're serving a steak, it needs to be cons if it's on our menu, it needs to be consistent year round. We wouldn't go from wild salmon to farm salmon back to wild salmon. We want to deal with the same species and make sure it's the same salmon year round. So let's talk about the farm here. Uh, yeah, so the farm is about 600 acres. Uh, 300 of it is wooded. Uh, there's about 100 acres of pasture and roughly 200 acres of hay ground, farm ground. Uh, like I said, we run about 40 cows right now. We're, we're slowly, gradually building up as our beef market expands. We have a lot more room. Uh, the cows live outside year round. Always have access to fresh spring water. Uh, all the water here, they either drink right from a creek that's spring fed or from a water system that we have up top in the hills that is uh, all sourced from a spring. So now that's important, folks. That's an important element. So you're, the water that these cattle are drinking are coming and it's feeding us the grass here, mm -hmm. uh, this beautiful grass you have, these grass pastures, is coming from your own spring. Yeah. It's coming from a pristine water source, um, which is very important because, you know, just to find food, clean food, it's hard to, to farm yourself clean, but then to have your neighbors doing pollution and having mm -hmm. stuff run off into your farm are all things that we need to equate into saying, yeah. hey, this is pure real food that we don't think about on a regular basis. That's right, and uh, our, even our neighbor to the north, which is uphill from us, they use the same pesticide-free practices that we do. So any even any runoff up the hill that may come down here, which we're pretty much at the top of the hill, it, it's the same way. It's all pesticide, pesticide chemical-free, uh, so it keeps everything really clean. So the cattle are on pasture year round, it yep. looks like. Yep. Uh, there's a small amount of grain supplementation. Yeah, yeah, the calves have free choice grain when they're out in the pasture. It just allows them to grow a little bit, put a little extra fat in them. I find the, for me personally, the 100% grass fed beef can be a little leaner and it takes a little longer to give them the market size. This way we can give them the market size within the, the good growing season of the grass. So from, you know, the calves are born, I think my first were born, well, a big snowstorm we had in March. Okay. I had six calves born the next day, right out here, and all wow. the snow. It was a mess. <laughs> How uh, late did the calves birth throughout the throughout the year? Like um, when was when was when is the latest one born? In well, the actually, season? the latest one. So I have two. I have two seasons. I have spring season, which is the last one was born. I'll say like April fifteenth ish. I don't remember off the top of my head, but right around there. And now I'm starting a new season, which will be fall calving, which is you can see the little guy out there in the pond. Yeah, there's some little guys in the he pond out there. He was just born the first of September, and there's a couple more due that they'll be on their mothers all through the winter and then all through mid summer, next summer to take advantage of that early grass. Cause in the early season, there's always too much grass in the pasture that they can't eat, that doesn't get utilized. Okay. So I'm trying to have a few more calves a little bit bigger by the time the grass really starts to pop in May, that they can utilize that for a couple months so I don't have to mow off a lot of good grass. So now on this farm, there's calves. Mm -hmm. This typical, when you go to the store, when you go to a larger and buy, buy a larger mm -hmm. beef brand, the, or even a larger farm for, for, for that fact, a lot of them aren't really calving their own calves. There's so many stages of beef production yeah. where like you could legitimately take your calves and send them to auction. Right, then, they exactly. go, then they go to a mid feeder, which will keep them on grass, mm -hmm. which will feed them as little as possible because their job's not to, not to spend money on, on feeding them. And then they sell them to a finisher that then fattens them up. Yep. And then the finisher sells them to a processor. And then the processor sells them to the distributor under their own label, which could, me, which could be like, Blue Sky Acres Farms, and you think you're buying Blue Sky Acres Farms, when in fact that cattle 
has been through four or five yeah. different hands yep. and then go to the restaurant and, oh, we have hormone free Blue Skies Farms beef. When in reality, it was just something that just went through this whole process. Of, yeah, you have no idea where it started from. You it may no, have, the last stop may have been local to you, somewhat local. I mean, who defines local? But it could have originated in Colorado for all we know. And right. And be trucked out here. We and that, that calf has been moved all along the yeah. whole process. So the first thing that I do when I interview a beef farm mm -hmm. is ask, do you do all the stages? Do you calf yep. all the way to process and branding? And that for me is important because I know you have control all along the whole line and it's your genetics, it's your it's your deal, yep. it's, it's, it's yours from the get-go. And you're not passing a problem calf or a problem system right. onto the next guy for him to... To do something else with, so that that's that's yeah, important for me. Yeah, everything that goes me. in our beef supply is born here, raised here, spends his entire life here uh, until the day it goes to the butcher, and that's it. And it, again, folks, here. there's a lot of great producers here in the Hudson Valley. Go to the farmers market, find out. One of the biggest things I was upset with this year, a place up north. Uh, one of my staff members said, "Marcus, this Mennonite market, that's mm -hmm. a farm, it's a market. They have this really inexpensive, good quality pork." And I'm thinking Mennonite farm. This is great. I call the place and I start going over the prices and the prices were too cheap. So I said to him, I said, well, how do you raise them? He goes, I don't raise them. I go, what do you do? He goes, I buy them from, from a, a mar another market, another distributor. I'm like, well, where are they coming from? He's like, well, I really don't know. <laughs> and it's a Mennonite farm that you would, that Mennonite farm stand market on the, on the side of the road that you would think has pure, you know, yeah, that yeah. they're raising and they weren't. The guy had no idea. And it's like that with a couple other local brands of beef too. There's some out there that they're sourcing them from Maryland into Pennsylvania, and they might throw a few token cattle in from the Hudson Valley. Yep. And they're calling it, you know, they're branding it an origin of beef that's really not indicative of where it's actually coming from. Um, do they do it 100% of the time? No, maybe it's 20%, maybe it's 30%. Maybe when that beef brand starts growing in sales, they have to supplement more in from other farms that are outside the area. Pineland, you familiar with Pineland beef? I've Wolf heard of it, yeah. So a lot of chef, Pineland Farms, you can go to a lot of restaurants here in the Hudson Valley that are serving the Pineland Farm burger, a Pineland Farm steak thing. They're claiming that it's regional, it's mm -hmm. local. Well, I've questioned Pineland Farms up and down because I see them at food shows. There's over 500 farms in the co-op. And they run from Maine mm -hmm. to the banks of the Mississippi. But yet these, these chefs are claiming they're serving a regional, local, locally, small production raised beef. Mm -hmm. And they're processing... I think three to 400 animals a week, which is still small by the realm of IBP, Monfort, because they're doing 400 animals an hour. Yeah. So 500 animals a week is not much, but that's more animals that you're gonna see here in five years. Oh, that's huge. I mean, to me, that's huge. That's huge, that's yeah. huge, right? That, that's, that's massively yeah. huge. And um, so, and it's not really Pineland tricking them. It's clever marketing. Mm -hmm. It's the way Pineland portrays themselves as their original, how they started. And a lot of chefs just think, hey, I'm buying this stuff that's from, yeah. you know? It's all just marketing. It's all marketing, yeah. It really is. And sure, yeah, and they're, buying, they're buying stuff. They have strict standards, no hormones or antibiotics. A lot of them, the people from Pineland are coming from farms like yours. Mm -hmm. and then they go into a co-op. You could sell your beef off to Pineland. You, you, if, as long as you meet their criteria, their breed, right. their hormone anti and antibiotic policy, you could sell it off. But that's, that's a brand of beef. It's not a farm. And... Um, for some chefs, that's a good choice because they need the production to yeah. keep up with. If somebody needs 10,000 pounds of ground beef a year, you can't do that because no. they're out of your realm. Yeah. So in Pineland might be the next progression for that place, right. but they shouldn't misrepresent in saying it's a local this and a right. local that because it's really not that. Yeah. It's local as it appears to be. And by no means do I want to judge a restaurant for trying to do the right thing because serving Pineland beef is a much better option than serving 95% of the other beefs out there that are available through a distributor. So kudos to them for doing the right thing, but it's just a matter of representing the product properly. And it does say on Pineland's website that they get, do, do get transferred to a consolidated feedlot in like 14 months. So Which some chefs, common. that's very common. Some chefs think that they're actually buying a grass fed or a pasture raised animal their right. whole life. And they're not folks, these are pasture raised animals. And we, we advertise this, your beef as pasture raised. We don't say it's grass fed, because right. you do put a little grain and product yep. into it. That's um, exactly how we do it. But the, you know, the funny thing is here, when I was on Lasseter Farm in Colorado, our last trip to Lasseter, um, 90,000 acres um, of, of grazing cattle, and he went out in the field in the fall and he goes, Marcus, look at all the grass here, it all has grain. It's all gone to seed. Everything in this field right now is grain and that's how the cattle fatten up for the winter. Mm -hmm. So technically, they're out on a pasture, they're eating what Mother Nature's provide them, 
but all the seeds are grains. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a part of the cycle of... Yeah, it's exactly they, what, what they would eat in the fall anyway. It's a right. little extra fat to get them to Right, the and when I tell people that, they're shocked. They're like, well... I'm like, well, yeah, that's the reality of what grass, grass comes to a grain. It yeah. seeds and comes to a grain. It so, all has to make a seed somehow. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Anything else you want to say about the farm? Um, before we talk about our burger contest. We got, can't forget our burger contest. No, I can't think of anything else. I just add to what you said. If you're looking for a local beef, go out and find a local farmer. Ask them some questions. Uh, anyone I know will be happy to answer your questions. And, and just look for someone that's honest with you and uh, forth, forthcoming. Yeah. And uh, we're going to take the drone out now and uh, do some nice aerial shots of the farm. I'm excited for that.